All right, so now let's get into uh, okay. Bad Guys. Yeah, so you yes. just rolled off this big film, um, which um, did actually make it out into the world, it into did. the live. Yeah. yeah, so it was directed by Pierre, so him yeah. and I continued working together. You know, I, I was able to be the head of animation on that show, and it was fantastic, and, you know, Pierre and I wanted to do something different with it, and I, we wanted to play an homage to the comic books, to the graphic novels, and make it very graphic, um, but not mimic specifically anything else you know we just wanted to i don't know we play around doing it on twos do we want to do it on twos and you know mm. or do we want to do it on ones and those are all conversations but at the end it's what serves the purpose of the story is what the right. style should be you know the style should be embedded to what the story and the emotion of the film is so we ended up with this like hybrid um kind of animation style which is like japanese and french animation kind of put together what a perfect segue to actually taking a look at some of that stuff then. So like, I guess basically we'll take a little bit of time here for you to kind of demonstrate some of that in action. Like what, what, what some, some of the little bits and pieces of, of, of the recipe that, that you, you, you were able to yeah. come up with, right? Yeah, definitely. And then I think a, a big part of the showing is a lot of the animation lines that we created on the show right. as well, because, um, I'll I'll show you. Well, we we'll just roll right. We'll Let's just, do it. We'll jump right in. Uh, yeah, right in there. Let's get our hands dirty. So let me show you. Let me show you. Uh, probably the first. Maybe this. This is a good shot to show. This was an animation shot by Jorge Capote, an amazing animator. And I'll just play the shot, and we can talk about the style and and where it came from and what what we were trying to do. So I'll play without audio. So basically, for the style of the animation that we wanted to do, we wanted to go very graphic. And I loved the comic book feel that the graphic novels had. And being a fan now of these books, I felt like we needed to pay respects to why kids loved the designs and the shapes and the poses that they did. In a comic book, same as animation, you want to find the least amount of poses to tell the story. Um, less is more, you know. So, uh, and comic book obviously is no different. If anything, you have less pages to tell the story. So, um, what is the one drawing that can tell you the action, the emotion, everything of that shot, of that moment? And basically, that's what I wanted to do for Bad Guys is what, how can we do that? How can we make a comic book, but in motion? And basically, it was not only find the least amount of poses that you can, but also let's get rid of all the in-betweens. So it doesn't mean that we're going on twos and threes. And if you're not an animator, it means, you know, 24 frames a second. It means we're going to hold uh, frames and duplicate them. So instead of doing that, we said, let's do it on ones because there's no need to do it on twos. We're not mimicking a comic book or, 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 or anything like that. But we wanted to stay and hold those poses as much as we can. So mm. basically what we did was remove the in-betweens as much as we could. That's it. So, so you know, heavily favor basically the poses. Not even heavily favor. Sometimes we just remove it all together. <laughs> okay. Um, can you show so us like, an example? Uh, an example that I had for, I, I guess I should put it on here, but uh, I told a supervisor to animate this for me, which was police chief just like banging her fist on a table. And I'm like, do it as you would on your own style and then he did that and then i asked him to okay now keep the same timing but i want what i want you to try is once the hand is up remove all this remove <laughs> all this and even the contact and just go right to the follow-through which is like right. the, the overshoot um and the and then there were items on the table and i said go from here to the contact and already have the objects already in the air like they bounced <laughs> up don't bring them up on once, just have them in the air, just pop it, you know, like, it's almost like you blink and you missed all the transitions. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what the style was. So we just remove all the information in between. And that's where animation lines came in, which was, I'll show you what what they are. Right. Because um, without them, it would feel like maybe it strobes a bit too much, right? Like you're because exactly. you're so aggressive. This very anime for sure. I guess that's where where, where that anime, anime part yeah. of the recipe. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So you're trying to hold on pose like you're trying to hold on this pose, you know, as much as you can. So then then you have then you go once you have like maybe you have you have one ease out and then the frame to to favoring that leg and then it disappears all of a sudden because you want to you just we're removing transitions altogether mm -hmm. because it's all about the the feeling 
more than the actual visualizations of following the 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 animation. But this is where we needed to do Steps animation. That lines. part where she kicks him in the face or knees him in the face. Oh yeah, here. I love the the pose on this guy. So you've got yeah, one frame go. to so, kind of wow. anticipate. You have it. you have the anticipation for one frame and you're holding it. Okay. And then you have the kick, the contact. So you're removing all the in-betweens. Uh, and then you right, can have it's not even the contact frame of his face. It's the after contact frame. It's the after, yeah. It's like, yeah. It's like the follow through part. Right. The contact yeah. is here uh, on the face, but then you can see it's going way past it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's so that's where animation uh, animation lines came in. And we call them anim lines. Basically, in order for the style to work, we needed to remove motion blur. You know, once you put on motion blur, it's going to give you the in-betweens that you don't want. So we needed to remove all the motion blur altogether. But if you remove all the motion blur, you're, everything's going to strobe too much, especially if the camera starts to rotate or pan around. Like, oh, yeah. you know, the background is just going to strobe. Exactly. So sometimes we would blur the background, but not the characters. Uh, sometimes we would do a lot of effects to kind of blur the background. It wasn't motion blur, but it was like kind of paint, kind of smears in the background in order to kind of help your eye kind of follow the motion. But for us, we're like, well, how do we how do we keep this? from not strobing, and that's where animation lines came in. So what I had to do in this film, I didn't get to animate much, but what I did was do the animation lines, which is pretty much lines and drawings to help you connect the broad spacings that there were on the film. Uh, I never some wanted films, to- just, just to be clear, ahead, some yeah. films might call this smears. It's not the same probably, but it's in the same, it's, it's, so, it's, yes. it's another technique to solve the same kind of problem sometimes. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. And it basically it went to like 2D, 2D days, you know, in 2D yes. animation, there's no motion blur in 2D animation. So when they had a big separation, they would tackle in different ways. They would do lines. They would do streak of lines. They would do multi limbs. So they would do like a bunch of legs and behind mm -hmm. them, or they would do smears, which is literally bleeding the color of the cell yeah. Uh, yeah. from one frame to the next. We did all of them. So we didn't just do one. We did all of them. Um, I think I ended up doing like 600 shots on the film doing this. Um, so instead of was animating, there anybody else doing these? Yeah. Online? So Eric Eric Tillman is a as a is a uh, After Effects artist, an amazing artist that's worked in the uh, DreamWorks for for years now, and um, he was digging what I was doing, and he's like, "Can I help in any way? <laughs> like, I would love to help." And I'm like, "Yes, please, I need help." Um, so he helped me a little bit. He probably did like 75 shots, which was tremendous help um and it was more like contacts like i'll show you examples of it um so it was it was it started on the simpler side because he needed to learn how to do them and i needed to learn how to tell him what to do because i was making it up as i went along to be honest um, let's see it show us. so yeah all right so here's the shot without it and now i will show you the shots with it and then we'll do a comparison Oh, yeah. Cool. So basically, what I'm doing is I am drawing and doing the bleeds that you're talking about, the smears, wherever I feel like it's strobing. A lot of it is smears the way you would think smears are, like even this, the foot. You know, you have this w great white shape, and then it just disappears in one frame. So then I just add a few smears yeah. so it, it, it eases your eye so it doesn't pop. And then even her arm, when she starts moving there, I just smear the whole body. These aren't the final, final compositing, by the way. I just realized like an hour ago. <laughs> but they are the drawings. Uh, then they clean them up, which is really nice. But basically, you can see here how I'm smearing the colors to help the eye. Um, and then on the spin, like here, where that leg disappeared, oh, wow. I just do one streak there. Uh, just to kind of help technique involved in that. What what goes through your head when designing that shape? How do you choose that shape to put in there? It was a lot of trial and error at the beginning, to be honest. Uh, when I started it, I just did lines, and then I realized some shots need way more than lines. This mm. is this is not just going to do the trick if I just do lines. And basically, I uh, you know we have our own software called Primo, and we can draw to do notes. And uh, Jeff uh, Buttsberg, uh, he's an amazing artist and, and technical <laughs> guru here at the studio. And I remember he came to my office, I went to his office and he's like, 
how do we do multi lens? Because we've done it in traditional form. We do like multiple rigs uh, in the same shot. Some rigs have like multiple legs that we can bring out, uh, like Boss Baby. So we've done it in the past in the CG way, but people call it smart. I call it lazy, where my answer was, can we just draw them? And he's like, let me see if we can do that. And he just went on a whiteboard and started doing this beautiful mind thing where we just started writing code and figuring out like how we can draw it. And I was just like, I'll just leave you too, but that'll be great if we can draw it. And basically we used the tool of drawing tool in Primo. So I could load any shot in lighting and then draw on top of it. So basically to answer your question, um, I'm drawing in the animation software while looking at the lighting. And when you look at, you know, I'll do the, I'll do this. When I look at the top, you can see the leg has that white sharp foot. The black is completely going across the character and then it completely disappears in the next frame. Um, the main thing that we did not want to get rid of is the arcs. Obviously, if you get rid of all the in-betweens, you're going to remove all the arcs and in-betweens. So you're going to miss the, the, the lines of actions and the arcs that, that emotion creates. So that's what I need to draw back in to make sure that you can feel the the swing of the leg but even the baton like you can see the baton it strobes like if you see the top it's just random orientations of the baton but what i need to do is add some spinning feel structure to it so when you play it you can feel it kind mm. of spinning around a little bit at the bottom um same as the spinning here the top you can see if you look at the top image you can see how it strobes the black and yellow and white completely strobe on the top, you know, there's a lot of colors changing back and forth between yellow on top, then all black, then yellow again, then yellow at the bottom, but that's really the yellow from the other side. I mean, it's, it's very stroby. So then on the bottom, I just add these lines to give the indication of rotation and spin. So when you play it, it's just easier for the eye. Same thing here. And then we got to do fun stuff like contacts like this, which was really fun to do. Um, I feel like kinda... it's so unintuitive. Uh, how do you know like when are you choosing to use a line versus when are you choosing to use a smear when are you doing the squiggly brush yeah, strokes versus yeah. when are you doing a like color i don't know um, how are you making those decisions so when it depends so uh it is it, it's hard to explain because a lot of them was trial and error and then i started to get a feel for what to do um when it swings and punches i i use lines that would mimic the the swing of it because I wanted to make sure that you see the swing. So if a character does this and you have a big arc, you're going to have one frame here and the other one is already here. So then I mm -hmm. absolutely would draw one big line going around the character so you can feel where it came from. And maybe at times do another hand here just to feel that ghosting of that hand. Um, others, I would the multi-limbs. Um, you know, a lot of people use the word multi limbs, which is multiple fingers or multiple feet yeah. to do an action. I, I would like do very that. French. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I, I there was like a, there's a lot, lot of French. Of, it's a lot in French and and Japanese animation too. I've I've seen a yeah, lot of it that's too. True. Um, it is very French. The smears also are, are very French, I think. And um, I use multi limbs for when it when it has to be chaos. Um, mm. when it yeah, when like it needs to when it needs to be chaotic and you need to add a lot of energy to something just add multiple crap in there. So if it's like our hands mm. doing this and it's supposed to be chaotic, just yeah. draw more. And it's just, you're going to feel a lot more energy, energy from there. Or if a character's running, um, but if a character's running, it needs to be very like elegant. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't do right. any of the multi limbs. It's a different feeling. It's provoking I, a different emotion, right? I like, feel like multi limbs is supposed to feel chaotic. It's supposed yeah. to feel energetic. And, yeah, and, it, it's, and it was more successful on, on when I did it. That way. It's funny because it it's solving feel. the same problem, but it gives you a different feeling. Like I'm, yeah. I think one of the cl a classic multi limb examples that I always go to when I'm talking about it would be like the uh, that uh, that old uh, Les Cogoblins uh, short film, the Le, Le Building. You remember oh. that old lady when she was getting all like mad, like multi limbs everywhere, her hands, because well, she was always like having a fuss, basically. You know who worked on that too, Pierre. Pierre, yeah, the director, yeah. <laughs> surprise, 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 yeah. Complete. Um, yeah. But I can show you another one that shows a better example of like what to use. Because then I started using like yeah. multiple eyes for random, <laughs> random moments. Um, and like, let's say, I think it's this one. Oh, let me bring it yeah. back up. So I'll just play this one without the, uh, the animation lines. But you can see that the idea is that Wolf is spinning Snake around. 
and mm-hmm. all you see is this ball, but I, I was missing something there. I was missing following the, the comedic ideas, like the face. So then I do something like this. So then there's some, th- now you, awesome. there's a, there's a resemblance of eyes. And basically <laughs> what I'm doing is if I frame through it, at the bottom here, you can see, I just yeah, draw. That's right. I actually paint the face so you can really see the eyes. And then I draw another kind of face mask on, on, on the other end. Uh, the Which, other important thing that I've realized was actually cutting into the drawing. And, the, and so you see at the bottom on the bottom yeah. left, you can see the colors of the background kind of over smearing the top because motion yeah. blur motion blur works both ways and you need it to do that in order to really feel that that, that, that blending. What's um, really cool is by doing that, like that's a detail you just would have missed. Like when you, when you see the top version, I just don't get that feeling of the eyes being like kind of showcased. It's easy right. to miss, but with, with, with the, like obviously replicating the way you have, it's like, it's, it's almost impossible to miss. Like you really get a feel for it. Suddenly you get a feel for it. I think, at least for me, the important thing was not to overtake the shot or for you to yeah. know it's there. I want you yeah. to be able to follow the action. That's all. I don't want you to yeah. Yeah. notice them in a way. For me, it was more, they're part of the shot. They're part of the, the illustration and the action, but they're not an additive of mm-hmm. it, like an effects thing. I, I didn't want it yeah. to be that. The only ones yeah. that I would want you to notice are like the impact shapes, the little white, like phew, the little white, like uh, ninja yeah. stars. What um, percentage of them do you feel like are solving a problem? Where like you know the the leg moved too fast, so we need to yeah. solve the problem so you don't get lost, or how what percentage of them are? It would be really cool if this was on there, and it uh, has to feel. And it's, I actually had to hold myself back yeah. from going. This would be so cool, and I would do it, and I loved it. And then I came in the next morning and looked at him like it's overtaking the shot. Yeah, you know, okay. I felt like it was it was being it was highlighting a little <laughs> bit of something different, and I'm I need a bit too much fun. Yeah, and I, I wanted to pay respect to all the animators that did all their hard work, so I didn't want to overtake anything, you know. It was great because animators were like, can you do some for me? Can you do some for me? Because they <laughs> wanted them on their shots. And sometimes I would have to go back to them and be like, if you want them if you want them in your shot, give me more separation here, give me more separation here, and then I'll do some lines. So it was a you more of a put a little jar on your desk. A little, it a was little a jar. little, <laughs> it was a lot of work. Yeah, but it was fun, you know, it was really fun. This is to solve a problem. This is a good example oh, yeah. of solving problem there's absolutely no motion blur here so obviously you're getting that shutter speed kind of mm-hmm. mimicking the speed so there's no arc no nothing uh um, so then it? i so then i do this ah uh, yes okay. which i start speeding <laughs> up the character by drawing more and more and more in reality if this shot would have kept going i would have stopped drawing multiple ones and i would have just done like big circles all around mm-hmm. like a helicopter um but you can see how I'm just trying to kind of, you know, mimic and, and redo some of what we're missing, which is the the arcs. And they don't make yeah, sense that... when you frame through it. Honestly, they don't. Actually, one of the things that I noticed that repetition is is breaks everything. If you repeat the drawings too much, you can see and feel it. And it doesn't mm-hmm. feel organic anymore. So a lot of it had to be custom, like every other frame had to be. I, I, I could barely copy paste like something like this because you would see the repetition um sometimes it's okay to have the repetition but i didn't like it uh so it was just more organic it's funny because that top one without the blurs it, it kind of like you said it has it gives you that weird stroboscopic illusion like when you look at like a, a propeller or a wheel spinning right at a certain speed it starts to feel like it's actually going slowly backwards exactly it ends up having that but the blur really helps guide the eye and understanding that there's movement but, and direction that's absolutely continuous blur will give fast. you all the circular motion yeah. but um but instead we just go graphic like this is in my opinion like this is this is what i would see this frame what I, is what i would see in a comic book yeah you know, that's exactly. why i would draw it that way totally um and this is all done with like primo was it just allowed yeah. to, to like it was made for notes and annotations and you're it just is. like screw it i'm just gonna like literally add my own like a layer of effect on top it was amazing because this movie awesome. was this movie was supposed to be in stereo so that added mm. another complexity you can't just draw uh, on top yeah. and, and put it on the screen because if it's in stereo those drawings needed to live mm-hmm. where that character was so yeah that's why jeff busberg and the creative team were able to export the drawings and create geometry based hmm. on the drawings wow. and wow. attach colors to them and then i would just have to name the stacks the same way as the characters 
So mm-hmm. then through an automated system, it would parent all the drawings to that character, the nearest point. It was wow. amazing. I mean, if this would have been stereo, it still would have worked. Um, so all that work That's was crazy. great. And then and then we made a call not to do stereo, which at the end of the day made it easier. It wasn't like, oh, that worked for nothing because we've used all that stuff for something else. But it, it did make it easier for me to draw whatever I wanted <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and not care about names or anything. I was just like, let me go faster. Um, cool. I'll show you another example. I mean, yeah, there's yeah, there's the there's this one. I'll just show the before and after right away. But it's the typical of like her legs going fast, and <laughs> on the top you completely miss some of the legs. And again, it's to create a lot of energy. So if I frame through it, you'll see that there's like multiple kind of legs and limbs and all kinds of things. Again. I try to make sense out of them. Some don't make sense at all, and that's okay, because it's supposed to be chaotic. It's supposed to be um, you're not supposed to follow, especially here. You know, you can see it strobing on the top when she's typing, but then here, like all these kind of lines, they they kind of help you kind of get that arc and that line of action a little bit. Can you go back to that down shot? I have a very specific question. There, yeah, yeah. So like. So there's a couple moments that where I see on the left hand side on the bottom, like the, you know the, the the ones with the animation lines or the the the, the sort of the replicated or duplicate yeah. limbs. I'm trying to fr- I don't know what frame it was, but there was one that I could see one of the limbs. Is he keep stepping? Because uh, there's there was a moment in there where it was clearly that there was like a a a, a, a duplicate limb. I'm wondering, like sort of back what what Jacob was asking you before, like what is the mentality, like like where do you place those limbs? Are you trying to show like an after image of the placement of where a limb was or will be, or are you looking to place them in a completely different random spot? Like I'm mean, with all the trial and error you did, I'm wondering like what works best in your mind. For me here, it was both. For me, it's like if you can see if you can see the top image here and this leg that's rotated. Yeah, on the that's right, perfect. That's it. That's uh, it. it looks at the like bottom, a I draw where it came from, so it okay. gives you the illusion of speed Got while it. not losing where it came from. But other times, I just draw a random, <laughs> uh, a random one, uh, like here on the bottom. You'll yep. see that there's a there's a little one, little nub kind of a ghosted between one on the left between the keyboards. Yeah. It makes no sense, but that's the idea of like just multi limbs, just having energy okay. and, and a bunch of interesting. Uh, this police chief shot is a quick example of the same thing. The top, you just have the regular animation, and the bottom, you just have regular random mm. fingers like this one. Yeah. So here's a, a, an, a an example where I use an arc because I wanted you to follow the arm a little bit better, and okay. multiple fingers because I wanted you to feel chaoticness in it. Uh, this one for sure, I added too much at the beginning, and then I was super happy with myself. And then the next morning, I look at it, I'm like, <laughs> it looks like a clown threw up on this. I can't use this, <laughs> and it just became the drawings were just too present, you know. So I had to reduce some stuff. So it was a lot. Again, it was a lot of trial and error. Um, and then I'll show <laughs> you this one. This one is probably the one that shows the most different things that I used in one shot. Um, and I'll frame through it once it plays, but there's a lot of stuff happening on this shot. And so I'll show you at the beginning here, the animator has some like great spit in the drawings. And I'm like, oh man, let's just use spit. <laughs> I want to have him spitting. Yeah. And this very like anime, you know, I, I see this in Pokemon because my son watches Pokemon all the time. And you see them like screaming and it's just two frames of like, ah, 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 ah. and yeah. just like a bunch of spit everywhere. And I'm like, I want to do that. And this this was like playtime for me. Uh, but it's not enough to catch your eye and feel like it's it's in front of the animation, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's little stuff like the multi limbs on the feet, you know, when he does when he does the little dance here. You can see the bottom; it has multiple legs. And then the main one uh, that I wanted to show here is the ball. Mm. And what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing the background color and rotating it around Mm -hmm. to get the background feet into the actual geometry and then have the opposite effect, which is where it's spinning from, have it smear over the background. So that way you get a feel of the rotation um, and eating into the background. And this I saw in 2D animation stuff all the time when I was doing research on how the heck I should do this. Um, And these were fun to do because it's like reinventing some things. And then here is like 
what you were asking, Jacob, like when do you use multi lamps and when do you use smears? Again, it wasn't for chaoticness on this moment. For me, it was just to follow the action a little bit or little things like this. So I'm like kind of smearing and blending the the zigzag stuff. But this is this must yeah, have been so much, much fun. Like it, it just was. looks like you just you just got to experiment with I like because we we you know like this is just animation candy basically. Yeah, to be able to play yeah. with this kind of stuff and try things. And I bet you, I, I would you say that you yourself like like learned a lot on this oh, production gosh, because yeah. of all the experimentation? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, these are all the shots. But yes, I, I learned a lot from the animation style that we created and the anim lines and everything. Um, a lot of it was, again, trial and error with all the animators. And mm -hmm. Jorge Capote is an amazing animator that joined me at the same time on Bad Guys to develop the look and the designs and help me help modeling and rigging and, and doing drawovers and paintovers. He has an amazing eye for appeal, and he helped a lot in, in finding this stuff. And a lot of the things that he would do, he did a lot of 2D animation on the show because we right. didn't have assets built, right? We have very short time. So we had to, we didn't have enough, a lot of time to, uh, to, to animate and show the director, this is what the animation style could look like because we didn't have the character. So we needed to do it in 2D. So we did a lot right. of 2D animation and a lot of his stuff had these animal lines and stuff. And, and I would ask him like, why did you do this? And why did you do this? And it's just picking his brain and sometimes... Mm. He's kind of the same as me. I'm like, I don't know. That felt good. And I'm like, well, that doesn't yeah. help me. So then I'm yeah. like studying. And then him right. and I are looking at YouTube videos of like old school 2D animation. And we're like, mm -hmm. look what they did here. They're duplicating this frame, but not this frame. What do you think that is? And then we, we study it and break it down. It was right. amazing. It was like going back to school. It was awesome. Totally. And I mean, it, so by, so I think you, you already answered this question, but I'm just going to, just for clarity's sake, um, you, so there was some of this work and some of this pre-thinking was already done during the sort of the prep work the pre-production but it sounds like you were still trying to like come up with that perfect recipe kind of into the production is that true <clears throat> absolutely it, yeah uh, it was well and we also did it through covid so Oof, right. yeah covid hit uh when we had we were three or four months into pre-production and covid hit okay. so we needed to it was this show in particular especially because of covid it was like driving a car while building it at the same time. Oh man. So we, we had to move forward and we had to mm -hmm. test things in shots sometimes. And yeah, rarely we were able to go back and tweak and change things. So there's mm -hmm. some animations lines that I look at, excuse me, that I did early on. And I, I would just be like, Oh, I wish I could go back. Yeah. We do right. those because I've, I've, I learned so much. That's right. Them. I feel like at the end I was just like knocking them out. And at the beginning I'm like trying to retire now. And then I look at it now and I'm like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have done lines. I should have done mm. smears for this moment because it would have been easier and better for the eye. And, and just, you know, I don't think people will notice, but but I do. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You will so, be haunted by these forever. I, it, 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 they just wouldn't have been, it, they wouldn't have benefited from the entire duration of the production of the the, the learning curve that you, you, you were on basically the entire time. Yeah. And but, how many you know, people did you just say, how many people did you just say jumped in to help? Like you were doing the lion's share of all these animation lines? Were the but... animation lines? No, yeah. it just Eric helped me out a little bit. You know, okay. Out of, um... So you didn't even need to come up with like like a kind of a like Bible a, of a to, Bible. Yeah, yeah. like to, it was yeah. pretty much you found one person who kind of just well, got it, well, thankfully. And you, you just there's a thing we wanted. You. I wanted to give the ability for animators to do them themselves as well because they all mm. wanted to do it. It was really fun. Right. Um, but schedule wise, it was just impossible right. for everybody right, right. to like learn it, do it. And then it just became a pipeline issue of how do mm. we fast trick and mainstream this? So I kept the animators very close when I worked on it. So I, I wanted their approval right. before sending it. it on. Oh, know, that's I fine. Because it's like, I didn't want it to just, well, I wanted, shot. I wanted, yeah. yeah, it's their shot. And I wanted them to be part of it, even though they can't do it. And yeah, I would yeah, also tell them, hey, if you have an idea of animal lines, go ahead and do it and I'll just replicate right. it. And if yeah. I have to tweak things, I'll tweak it and I'll show you. So it was a very it was very fun that way because I, I was able to keep them along for the ride. I think yeah. at the end when people started to roll off, unfortunately I couldn't show them, but sometimes I did anyways, even though they weren't on the show. Right. Um but that's why it felt very collaborative, you know. And and um unfortunately some didn't get to do it, uh, or all of them didn't get to the animation lines, but mm -hmm. But they got it on yeah, the shots, so that's good. Do you, like, was it just, pr just production timing? Like, you you would have wanted to add more, and you just kind of couldn't get to them all? Or, well, like, did you? how did you triage what shots got done first, basically? Like, uh, well, which ones it, you, it, you knew you needed to do? 
it was basically the ones that needed it for the motion blur, right? So okay. it wasn't right. it wasn't an aesthetic. It wasn't like let's okay. put a decor on top of this cake to make it look better. It Got was it. more of like what needs it because again, the drawings I didn't want them to be in front of the animation. I wanted to yep. be part yep. of it, so I didn't want you totally. to like easily pick them out when you're watching the film. Uh, when you're framing through it, of course you can. So it was really just whatever shots needed it in production. And so we would look at lighting. You? Like, were you the one mostly, like calling that? Like, were you just doing dailies me. basically and looking? Okay. Yeah, mostly me. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, kind of approval process when we look at lighting. We're looking at IMF. We're looking at all these different checkpoints in the apartment. Sometimes Pierre would ask like, "Hey, do you think we need some atom lamps?" I'm like, "Sure." Or sometimes effects couldn't do some some effects, so I would just pitch in and be like, "I can draw them." You know. Yeah. Also, they'll be fun to do. So, like, even totally. this last one where piranha's running and there's like a uh, uh like a trail of dust that's all drawn in you know so that okay. way effects didn't have to get in there and that was also done by jorge in his 2d sketch so i'm like oh dude i'm gonna add that if you're okay with it he's like what yeah do it you know so then i'm like adding it in mm -hmm. there um and you know i thank pierre for trusting me because he couldn't see all of them so i would just do it right pass it to lighting and done you know so oh man that's awesome thankfully he liked them because they're there now. yeah 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 that's, <laughs> can't take them back basically can't take them back